Our next speaker is going to go over proposed solutions by standards group and browser vendors to standardize controls and solve the pain points that developers have been facing for years. She is a program manager for the developer experience at Microsoft Edge and is leading the Web We Want initiative, a cross-browser and cross-company initiative to identify developer needs and bring those changes to the web platform. When not on the web, she can be found mountain biking in the forest of the Pacific Northwest or the Arizona desert and is usually always plotting her next visit to Scotland. Here to present standardizing select what the future holds for HTML controls, please welcome Stephanie Stemak. I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Stephanie, and I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Edge Developer Experiences team. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about HTML form controls, which it turns out are a massive pain point for developers, even though they're some of the most commonly used pieces of UI on the web today. So today, I'm going to give a brief overview of the past and present of HTML controls. I'm going to talk about the current problems with native HTML controls and how browsers and standards groups are proposing solving these pain points for developers. So I need to go back to 1995 and talk about some history. In 1995, HTML 2.0 became the first official specification ratified by the W3C. And with that spec came our first set of standardized form controls. But the specification didn't standardize form parts and how forms were constructed. It standardized the method to enter data into an HTML document, and for that data to be used to perform an action, such as logging into a website. So it standardized what the forms were supposed to do, but not how they're built. And so that was 1995. Uh, between then and now, that's been 26 years of the web evolving, and it's led us to the state that we're in now. The web has definitely improved since then, but in those 26 years, we haven't really done anything to make native form controls easier to work with, even though there have been some improvements and we've even added new ones. If we look at the state of styling controls today, I've got them bucketed out into three categories and most of the controls that we really want more control over with our styling and extendability are in our third bucket, which I call the good night and good luck bucket because of how hard it is to style these if you can even style them at all. And on top of that, we have all these browser inconsistencies in the way form controls render. So as a web designer, before I knew about the web platform, it was so hard to explain to my clients why my controls look differently in different browsers. And that was so frustrating. This again boils down to that issue I discussed initially. Form controls and their parts were not standardized. So browser engineers built and styled these differently and these are just looking at some of the top browsers out there today. So on top of poor CSS access to style controls and browser inconsistencies, we can't actually extend the functionality of a control. I love this tweet from Scott Gell. You have one problem. You want icons in your select menu options. You decide to make a custom select menu. You now have at least 75 problems. So when you rebuild a control from scratch, instead of using the native control that the browser provides, you don't get all the good stuff that's already baked into that control, like accessibility, security, and performance. And you have to go in and add all that back in and then test it. It's a bad developer experience, but it's necessary when you can't extend your controls the way you need to. A good example of this is the video element, where the developer either gets all of the controls or none of them, just by adding or removing the controls attributes. You can't customize that. And when we want our HTML controls to look like this, or even this, it's no wonder developers have just reverted to building forms from scratch. 
And so on the browser side, we decided to take a step back and we wanted to ask some questions to make sure that this was an area to go invest in. It's a pain point for developers, but are better native form controls something they really want? And the answer has been overwhelmingly yes. This is something that developers want. So my colleague Greg Whitworth ran an initial survey to dive deep into this space. And he had a variety of respondents from different roles and backgrounds um, and varying degrees of experience working on the web. One of the questions asked was which form control did respondents recreate? And these were the top 10. Select came in at 10.7%, checkbox at 10.2, and date at 9.5, followed by radio, file, progress, button, dialogue, text area, and text. And then he wanted to know the reasons why controls were being rebuilt. And over a third of respondents said it was because they couldn't change the appearance. Another third just wanted to add functionality, so they wanted to extend the control. And just under a third said because of browser inconsistencies, which one can probably assume has to do with appearance and rendering. And so if we take that and group that in with our first group of devs who said they just couldn't change the appearance, that's over two thirds of developers spending time recreating form controls from scratch just because of appearance. That's a lot of developer time. So Greg shared an amended survey with JSConf EU attendees in 2019, and he asked two additional questions. Which form control gives you the most frustration and why? And Select clearly stole the show with nearly 50% of respondents saying Select. The next closest one was Date coming in at 17.3%. And these were some of the verbatims that he got in that survey about Select. Select requires hacky tricks. I can't style the option elements at all to the extent we need to. But the amount of work it takes to implement an accessible alternative with complete feature parity is massive. And I can just feel the pain in this response. So this prompted me to ask my own question of developers and conduct my own research. I wanted to know how painful is it and so I went to Twitter and I asked developers and front-end designers to please fill in the blank. I would rather blank than attempt to style a native select element. And it turns out y'all really hate select, like a lot. This tweet had over 250 responses. I'll just highlight some of my personal favorite responses that were given. I would rather call each person attempting to use the forum and ask them what option they would like. I would rather chew on glass. I'd rather grind my teeth to the jawbone with rough sandpaper than attempt to style a native select menu. So clearly, this is a massive pain point for developers. Um, so let's talk about the future and even some of the present um, and what's to come because there's been a lot of stuff in progress since I first gave this talk. So I'm excited to say the future is shiny and exciting. Um, and I hope you're as excited about it as I am. So uh, to start off, Edge has been leading the controls work and collaborating closely with Chrome to make updates to native controls in the Chromium project. So our first focus was improving the style of native controls in Chromium and bringing over some of those accessibility improvements um, that we had in the Edge HTML engine over into Chromium. With the new styles, the team landed on a much more modern and neutral look that we hope lessens the time spent on recreating form controls purely for styling purposes while we work on the standards work to bring better control styling to browsers. But that's not all we've done to native controls in Chromium. So as of June 2021, I'm excited to share that dark mode for form controls um, in Chromium is now a thing. So when the web developer expresses support for dark mode and the user has this mode enabled, our user agent style sheet will auto darken form controls out of the box. So like normal, um, styles added by the web developer or user will override the user agent style. So if you've made your text input background bright yellow, uh, you'll need to update that color yourself in dark mode using the prefers color scheme media query. And so to render all document form controls in dark mode, a meta tag declaration is needed to let the browser know which color 
modes the website supports. So our declaration here tells the browser it's safe to render controls as light or dark. And this is available in Microsoft Edge on the desktop in version 87, Chrome for Android in version 91, and future versions of Microsoft Edge for Android. And you can read more about dark controls in Chromium at aka.ms backslash dark dash controls. And now let's talk about HTML because HTML isn't done. So we're also looking at new native components and a lot of these proposals are coming out of our research and work that has started with rebuilding the select element. So while looking at how we wanted to build a new version of the select element, the team identified a need for a universal pop-up element. This proposed pop-up element is a transient user interface that's displayed on top of all other web UI. And these are things like action menus, form element suggestions, content pickers, and teaching UI. The key differentiator for the pop-up element from other aesthetically similar elements is something called light dismiss behavior. So this light dismiss behavior means that the pop-up will be automatically hidden when the user either hits the escape key, the layout of the pop-up or its anchor element is changed, or focus moves outside of the pop-up. And a generalized definition of light dismiss is currently being discussed in the OpenUI standards group. So elements that don't have light dismiss behavior are things like alerts, toast, custom tooltips, and other miscellaneous persistent popover UI. So let's take a look at a basic example here of pop-up and how it works. So we have a button and we have a pop-up element. And to tie the button to the pop-up, we have our button ID equals menu button. And we'd use an anchor attribute and set that value to the button ID of menu button Currently, pop-up menus are not visible until show is called by the author, so we do need some script here. Um, you can go read more about the new pop-up proposal at aka.ms backslash pop-up dash explainer. There's lots of other exciting work with controls happening too. So some of the other things we're working on um, are tabs in the browser. So we have an initial demo of what tabs could look like. Um, this is all experimental and would also require proposing quite a few new elements, um, but this is getting that work started to figure out if this would meet developers' needs. So to go view that demo, you can go to aka.ms backslash tabs dash demo. Anchored positioning is our next proposal, um, and this is a proposal to allow the anchoring or pinning of a top layer UI like the pop-up we see here. Um, to a point on another element. So how the top layer UI is positioned with respect to its anchor element is further influenced or constrained by the edges of the layout viewport. In our example here, we have a menu whose top left point is anchored to the bottom left point on a menu button. When there is insufficient space in the viewport below the button, the pop-up menu should be rendered above the menu button instead. And you can view that uh, proposal for anchor positioning at aka.ms backslash anchor dash pause pos. And now let's talk about the thing that I'm most excited about. Let's talk about fixing the current problems with controls and styling them. So last year in August 2020, um, an explainer with proposed solutions for how we're going to approach enabling customization of controls um, was, re was released by the Edge, Chrome, and OpenUI teams. The proposal for form controls is using something called the MVC design pattern, where the form control is made up of three distinct parts, a model, a view, and a controller. The goals that this proposal set out to accomplish will revolve around enabling as much customization as possible while reducing the overhead for the developer. So we're proposing three different solutions that offer a range of flexibility in customization depending on what the developer wants to do. So our first solution uh, is standardized control UI anatomy, parts, and behavior. So in that very brief history of controls I discussed, the root of the issue is that form controls and their parts are not standardized and therefore not reachable by developers. So OpenUI is the initiative under the YCG, which is the Web Incubator Community Group, 
um, to standardize form controls and components. The Open UI team, which is open to anyone who would like to participate, um, is focused on researching and documenting design systems and frameworks out there today. Um, they're identifying patterns in naming and use cases, and they're using those patterns to establish OPAS for standards and eventually browsers. And because select was clearly the biggest pain point for developers, it was the first form control that OpenUI started to research. Uh, and there's an editor's draft proposal for select on the OpenUI website if you want to go check that out. So when I talk about standardizing control anatomy, I'll use select as an example of what a controls anatomy looks like. So the anatomy of a select could be defined as consisting of one button part containing one selected value part and one pop-up list box part containing zero to n option parts. And then we would go on to define the expected behavior of select, like what happens when you click on it and so on. So this standardized anatomy will allow the styling of native parts using pseudo classes and the part pseudo element. So a developer will be able to change the color of a selects button in an interoperable manner without replacing any of the HTML. So in our example here, we have our CSS class called styled select, and we're utilizing the part pseudo element to target the button to change the background color. Notice here that the HTML code is just the code of a select today. You wouldn't actually have to rewrite uh, any of the form control. So we're just exposing the parts of a select and giving devs access to styling via those pseudo elements and classes. And then additional states will also be standardized, uh, like the open state for select. Our second proposal enables more powerful customization of controls and content with something called named slots. So a set of slot names will correspond to each piece of the controls view that, that a developer might want to replace with their own content. In the case of select, we have a slot equals button and slot equals list box. And that will indicate to the platform that custom content will be slotted in by the developer. In addition, developers will add part equals button and part equals list box, which I'll go into briefly here about why that's needed. So if you've ever wanted to add a country flag or some other visual content into your list box for select, uh, this will allow you to do that without rewriting the whole control from scratch. Now slots also provide the flexibility to customize only parts of the control. So let's take input type equals range as an example. A developer could provide a slot and part for the movable thumb and the UI for the track would automatically fall back to the default provided by the platform. And so you might be asking, why do I have to provide a part and a slot name? By adding that part to your code, this will signal to the platform that it has code to wire up to your control and it will apply native event handlers where applicable and that will handle user input which means that developers can make UI tweaks without rewriting tons of JavaScript. Adding that part name will also apply the correct accessibility semantics to your controls as well. So we're going to let the platform do what it was meant to do and apply those things for you just by adding part. And finally, our third solution is Shadow DOM replacement. Now currently, attach shadow throws an exception. You can't actually call it on any form control currently. This restriction will be removed when enabling customization for a given control type, and calling attach shadow will result in the default user agent shadow DOM being swapped out with a new shadow root that will be populated with content provided by the developer. And developers will also be required with the shadow DOM solution to label the core parts uh, using the part attribute. Otherwise, the shadow DOM will not be rendered. The platform will not make an attempt to guess at the correct behavior and won't render an incomplete control implementation. And please go check out the explainer. You can find that at aka.ms backslash controls dash explainer. There is a lot more technical detail in that that I don't have time to go into today. 
And finally, my call to action is for you. Uh, we need you. We need your feedback and your opinions on this work. And there are multiple ways to do that. Um, you can either contribute to the forum control investigations on OpenUI. Again, that group is open to anyone who would like to join. Tell browser vendors what you need from your forum controls and provide feedback on the explainers. Um, go ahead and follow these folks. These are all the different people across Chrome and Edge and OpenUI who are working on form controls. And you can always ping me and I'll make sure your feedback gets to the right person because we are here to listen because these improvements are ultimately for you. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone. I think we're in for a big treat with this particular Q&A. Hi, Stephanie, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Uh, good to see you, good to meet you actually. <laughs> Likewise. Uh, so I uh, was looking forward to your talk because I think as most engineers, like I've always had the, just the most bane of my existence we trying to do HTML forms and control elements just because I always want them to be customized and designed and match every, with my visual language perfectly. And it's just, it's, it was always such a pain. So I'm really excited to see that there's some, some movement in this area on the part of the browser um, creators and that this is fine. We're finally gonna be able to have some true control, ha, control over our controls. Look at that. <laughs> cool. Um, so I want to go ahead and get into some of the questions here. We have quite a few I see in the in the chat, but I'm going to go ahead and start with a couple of them. Um, so one uh, is a question from Martin, and Martin wants to know um, what were some of the accessibility considerations on um, from on the light dismiss pop ups. Um, I'm so I'm wondering if there's something specific he's looking for. So light dismiss is still so with all of the proposals. Um, mm -hmm. In OpenUI, accessibility is at the forefront. So that's mm -hmm. something the team is super um, aware of and considerate of when they're thinking of these proposals. Um, light dismiss, we haven't gone, we just have a general definition of it. So we haven't gone into like imp actual implementation of it yet. So I don't, I don't have details, but if there's something specific that Martin's looking for, I'd be happy to answer that. Okay, so yeah, Martin, go ahead and um, do, you can put some follow-up questions in the chat and Stephanie can go ahead and get to them when she has time. Uh, so from Donna, Donna wants to know, does a modal count as a pop-up? Um, I'm going to guess you're talking about the modal dialogue and no, uh -huh. it does not. So that you have to like actually go in and close out. Okay, okay. Um, so from, ooh, I, I'm going to say this is Alexi. Uh, Alexi wants to know, um, do, do you work with other browser vendors such as Firefox or Safari on these propositions to make them stand out all over the web or are you solely in Microsoft land uh, with Chromium and Edge? Right, so this is a good question. So there's actually two streams of work that I mm -hmm. brought up in my talk. So um, when it comes to native controls in the Chromium project, so like the styles, um, and dark mode um, and accessibility improvements. Those are Chromium specific. Mm -hmm. um, for the um, open UI work, so in, that, in the last part of my talk where I talked about the three different solutions and things like the um, pop-up proposal and anchored positioning, those are being, that work is being done in the open UI working group um, and has some of it has been presented to Firefox and Safari folks in standards groups already like a couple months ago. Um, so that isn't just a purely like Microsoft and Chrome effort um, that that is a we are planning to like get this into standards groups eventually so that they will be in all the browsers. That's the goal. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I, I kind of figured that was the case, but yeah, you have to kind of start where you are and then sort of go to the browser, the, excuse me, the wider ecosystem of browsers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, next question here from Drew. Drew wants to know, how difficult is it to consider the lag between, you know, a plan standard uh, and the eventual adoption? Um, It's pretty difficult. I wish I could provide like a 
good timeline of when these things will make their way into browsers and standards, but it is a process. Um, so it'll be a couple of years. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of figured stuff like that would kind of kind of move at a at a little bit of a slower pace. But yeah, it will, it'll, we'll get there eventually. Great. Yeah. yeah we <laughs> okay, will. cool. Uh, so question from Christy. Christy wants to know, um, how will the, the backward compatibility look for these new proposals? Um, so the goal is that any like select that is currently, I'll, again, I'll use select as the example. Mm -hmm. um, any select that's out there on the web today will still function like it's like it does now. Um, we can't just introduce a new, completely new control and because not every website um, or is maintained still. So we don't just want to break all of the selects. So those will still work, but the intent is to have is to give developers the option to still use the, the new one that's being built. Okay. Yeah, of course you can't break like break existing existing forum control. Like that will basically break the web and nobody really yeah. appreciates that. No. <laughs> so yeah. we don't want to do that. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, let's see, wait, wait, I lost track of where I was. All right, yeah. So Jacob wants to know, um, how will the Shadow DOM replacement features work with accessibility controls? Like, will we have to rewrite support for native ally features if we replace the Shadow DOM? Um, I don't believe so, no. So the intent is, again, with the other two, like similar to the other two solutions that um, when you replace the shadow DOM, if you include the parts that I mentioned, so like part equals list box or whatever, that is going to be required because that will indicate to the platform that um, there's code that needs to be wired up on the browser side and, and let the browser handle all of that for developers. So we're trying to make it so developers don't have to rewrite um, all the code that they do right now. Okay. Excuse me. Okay, uh, Mike wants to know, um, will other plot browsers be playing catch up and how do you uh, work to ensure cross browser support? I think you touched on this a little bit with the standards working group, but yeah. Yeah, it, same answer. It's it's all happening in, um, again, the open UI working group, and then you eventually have to take that into the different standards groups. Um, and so when, of course, browsers moved at different speeds, so I doubt mm -hmm. they'll all adopt it at once. Um, we can't control that, but um, yeah. again, the goal is in the standards groups and and eventually all browser adoption. Yeah, well, I will say, like, just kind of knowing the way the, the internet works, the last browser to actually implement this is going to be the one people are like shaking their fists at. It's like, come on, because it was, what, what was something else that was implemented recently? I, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was web components or something. I can't remember, but it was like, the we were all, oh, no, it was grid. It was CSS grid. We were all, like, waiting on the last one. Like, come on, catch up, catch up. <laughs> so, yeah, I can, I can definitely say, like, once one browser does it, it's kind of like a race to kind of, you don't want to be the last one on the train so to speak so yeah. no pressure to you know the browser breakers out there but or maybe a little bit of pressure <laughs> so um Gilson would like to know um do you see new form components on the radar like or rather than the old same ones like do you see us implementing like a standardized toggle for example um interesting is interestingly enough so there was a toggle switch that had been proposed um, by Chrome, or I don't know if it was proposed, but they had worked out a like toggle switch demo um, that had uh, that you could go play with. Um, and they ended up abandoning it. And I cannot remember why. I don't think they gave me a reason. They just said they abandoned it. Um, but if you are looking for specific controls that you would like to see the browser natively provide, one, open UI is a great place to propose that so we can get that on our radar um, and then just be loud about it to like the browser vendors. So on their platform status pages or their GitHubs, you can open issues about features that you would like to see and features include native form controls. So if you want to see a native toggle, be loud about it and let browser vendors know because developer signal is how we sort of gauge uh, where to put our energy. 
All right, so you guys, you, you all have heard that verse. Uh, if you want something, just be really, really annoying about it, and eventually the browser <laughs> vendors will figure it out. <laughs> okay, so it looks like the last question we have here it went from Fen, and Fen wants to know, what are some personal gripes the, that you have with native controls that you're most excited to fix with these proposals? I'm just excited for style, like being able to style them. Like I come from a background in design, um, I think I mentioned in my talk and just being able to use native controls and not spend countless hours trying to make them look the same across browsers is all I'm excited about. I lost so many nights trying to get things to look the same back in like 2012, 2013 and, and just so many unhappy clients who were yeah. like, yeah, so that, that's what I'm just most excited about, like easy styling across all the browsers using native components. Definitely. I mean, that, that prospect alone is like very, very excited. So I'm right there with you. All right. Great. Thanks so much for your time, Stephanie. This was wonderful. Like I said, it was a great talk and I'm very excited about the work that you're doing and where this is going. So um, thank you all so much. And we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to go into our next talk.